hope that Keist comments. Keist, are you there? We are here early. We are here early. How about that? So we're live on Instagram and on YouTube. What's up, everybody? We're going to start right off with that T-shirt giveaway. Augustine Gudici 8202 Agility for Fast Feet video. You commented on that one. You're going to get that free T-shirt. Mars Fitness 55 Exercise for Athletic Fitness or athletic muscle, you're going to get that free t-shirt. And then finally, Kevin Smith, UW4MJ. You are getting that free shirt. So I'm hoping that I blew everybody away by showing up actually early. Keist, I see you commented down there. Wait, what? Dane is 10 minutes early. Aren't you proud of me? Isn't that a big victory for me to be actually early? So if you guys are on Instagram and you don't know, we give away this free shirt to anyone who comments on our YouTube videos. Three people won that this week. Augustine G, Augustine Giudici, 8202, Mars Fitness, and then Kevin Smith. Wasn't Kevin Smith the 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 director or the writer for, um, for Dogma and like Chasing Amy? I'm pretty sure he was. Kevin Smith, UW4MJ, core for athletic physique. You guys, all you have to do is claim your free T-shirt by e emailing us, support at garagetrank.com, uh, that you won the giveaway. You can send us that email. Take a screenshot of your actual YouTube studio. When you take that screenshot of your YouTube studio, uh, we can confirm that that is indeed you, and then we can send you guys that free gear. So I think that's something that, pretty cool that we're doing for everybody out there and along with giving tons and tons of free content so we're gonna have a freaking sweet show today if you're on instagram head over to casey martin 70 clerks oh clerks yeah yeah that's right you're right it was clerks as well it's like chasing amy clerks small rats dogma i feel like maybe i was wrong with with dogma um somebody just commented d fierce i got my peak shrink shirt that's sweet Beef which dislike. Come on. All right. So what we're going to be going over in the show is the best exercise or sizes exercises to increase your vertical jump. We're going to go through all these questions from the YouTube audience, what you guys are asking on a regular basis. And I hope you guys continue to partake in our surveys. Last week, we had one poll that had over 18,000 votes. 18,000 votes and that was over that was on uh what's the ultimate split and I think it was 45% of you actually voted that the best split is three days and I think you're all wrong I think all of you are all wrong but we got a we got a video in the works just for you guys just for those 45% just for those 9,000 people around 8,500 people who voted for that three-day split. So we're going to go into some of those comments. Then we're going to go into uh, some of the other factors around um, what you guys are, what you guys think about with, with regards to that, some of those questions. We're going to have two React videos. So we're actually do a React video on screen. So Instagrammers, you guys should head over to YouTube where you're going to get a lot better interaction. And then we're going to go into a whole bunch of other facets around what you're saying. Ooh, the liquid sword, D fierce. I just saw that out of the corner of my eye. I had to comment uh, seeing that liquid sword. So first question. Yo, I got a question. For cardio and wrestling, how many different runs or exercises should I have in a day for cardio and wrestling? This is from Poi Raz Balk 9645. So I think there, there's a couple different ways to answer this. First, if we're looking at... Uh, cardio for wrestling if you're going for a run are we doing long distance like long slow distance are you doing sprint interval work are you doing high intensity interval work on a hill so that's one thing i would say is like once or twice a week you could get out and do just a really slow easy run like even as slow as like 10 to 11 minute miles okay that will still help your endurance okay and you run four or five six miles and that's going to be absolutely fantastic and then one day a week maybe or you can even do this where you're where you're in the wrestling room and you're doing some uh higher intensity um sparring or really fast uh, like higher uh live drilling things along those lines um now you also did ask how many exercises should i have in a day specifically for uh, endurance. And I think that the next, that big question there would come down to the number of exercises. Okay. So if we're doing like a circuit based, uh, 
program, right? Anywhere from four to six, and sometimes it's as low as three. But if you look at like four to six exercises, you go through that three to four times. That's going to be fantastic. You could have as low as two where you're doing 20, 20 cows on the assault bike, followed by four lengths of sled push, followed by 20 cows on the assault bike. That's an absolutely killer, killer, killer cardio for wrestling. And that's how you can get really creative and just try to try to improve that overall cardio. But you got to look at what's a long, slow distance. What's going to be the sprint interval? What's going to be the high intensity interval? Try and figure out where you lack as a wrestler like where do you struggle the most and then that's how you can identify what you should be doing inside the gym based off of your endurance so that's a really good question now we're getting into that next question which is going to be from jc gj one gg okay uh jc gj wait no that's not the jc one uh let's go here the one on the screen Oh, maybe that is the JC one. Okay, so if we go back to this one, uh, let's see here. JC Coach, great content for teenagers. He commented on the best agility drills for speed. Great content for teenagers who are just starting this training. How many sets of each drill on each side should they be doing? And should they start to add sets as they start to strengthen? So this is a question in regard to agility uh, training. And, and when you're doing agility, you know, side sprints or side jumps or um, lateral, any type of lateral jump, it's typically going to be unilateral, right? And so what I would err on, okay, if I'm training high school kids or even as young as like my son's 12, right? My oldest son is 12 years old. We'll do unilateral jumps that are going to help with his agility. That's going to help him slow down the, the fastest, right? And I think that's something we got to think about is that slowing down the fastest is really what's going to help us uh, when we're talking about agility. So a lot of the best agility drills for speed have to be focused on that specific skill. How quickly can we slow down? Uh, and so, so when we're looking at that, it's like, typically if it's a really hard movement, you know, really challenging movement, you're going to want, you know, three to four sets. Okay. If it's an easier movement, you could probably get away with five to six sets. The reason being is that slow or harder movements that are, are harder to do. Okay. So they're, they're more challenging. And one exercise, if you watch our YouTube channel, you've seen us do, um, something like, uh, let's say like a Jan jump series. Okay. That's a really challenging lateral movement. That's going to help with agility. You might only be able to do three sets because you're so fatigued at the end of that, especially as a younger athlete, as a 12, 13, 14 year old, you might not even be able to do it. But as you're advancing and as you're getting older and more explosive and more athletic. Okay. So think through that lens. And now you're 20 years old, you're 21. You can get away with five or six sets to each side. So, I think that's just got to be something that you keep in the back of your mind. Uh, I Again, I would just recommend when, when you're trying to figure out for agility specifically, try to identify which side's slower, which side reacts a little bit more delayed. Uh, try, to re try to identify, like, is it the quad? Is it the glute? Is it the potentially the hamstring? Do you see movement in the knee? Is there, are they lacking co-contractions in the hip? You know, do they bend at the waist? Do you see some type of uh, issue with dynamic trunk control? So now you can start to troubleshoot those things. You take those plyometric exercises or those agility-based movements, and then you use them as your diagnosis for what their strength work needs to be. Then you implement the strength work, and then you keep coming around with that, that higher speed movement. And now we lead to better performance as an athlete. And that's like some of the big stuff, just staying up to date with some of the research that we're going to be going over later is like comparing the effectiveness of a short-term vertical jump program versus a weightlifting program for athletic power development, right? So if we can stay up to speed on this stuff, it's going to make it easier for us to identify um, which exercises people struggle with, which exercises people need more of. Uh, which which muscles seem to be lagging, uh, and then in turn we can lead to just better overall uh, sports performance, right? So that's a big one. Now, next one. This is going to be from Rob Edwards, sixty nine twenty six. Let's get into this one. I've already got him up on the screen. Rob Edwards, sixty nine twenty six. You know, growing up in the nineties, we had AOL Instant Messenger, and some of you guys. In Instagram, in the Instagram chat, you might know about this. In YouTube chat, you're going to be a little bit younger maybe, but 
you guys might not even know what AOL Instant Messenger was. I just wanted to point out it's Thanksgiving time. Which one of Sam Mattis's forefathers was a pilgrim? Actually, his mom's side, possibly. Possibly his mom's side. Um, otherwise, unlikely anybody. <laughs> Uh, going back to this, I think it's, I wanted to just say this is like Rob Edwards, 69, 26 is it's funny for me because growing up in the nineties and having AOL, AOL and some messenger, it was like 95% of people had 69 in their handle. Everybody. Mine was Rand, Randy KPL 69. Uh, so if you want to hit me up on, on AOL and some messenger, I'll be waiting as I hear those doors shutting. All right. So let's get into. The next one. Now we're going to go into some of these reacts. Oh, shoot. I did not answer Rob's. I, I'm too busy talking about 69 instead of actually talking about how to what the best exercise to increase uh, vertical jump. And so this is where we can get into some of the reacts that we're going to go into. And we're going to talk about uh, we're going to show you some of the videos where we talked with uh, knees over toes guy, Ben Patrick. Uh, we're going to show you uh, two exercises that are absolutely fantastic that you can use for developing that vertical jump. I'm going to break down that research paper um, to go into that a little bit further. And I think that when you guys see this stuff is like, what's the best for increasing vertical jump? I think it's going to be dependent upon, you know, do you have a short legged athlete? Do you have a long legged athlete? Do you have somebody, you know, so I would mean is somebody more hamstring dominant, somebody more quad dominant, um, What's their what's their background like? How long how long have they they've been training? Oh, I forgot. I used to have an old YouTube as well. Um, how long have they been training? You know, maybe something like weightlifting movements or not. You know, so that's all going to play into uh, what's the best exercise to increase vertical jump. You guys know I've done this where uh, high uh, or a hang power clean, a high hang power snatch, a two box power snatch. Those are all freaking phenomenal for increasing vertical jump just like stair jumps, just like depth drops into hurdle hops. Those are also going to be absolutely fantastic. So let's get into these reacts. So this is going to be the, the first time that we've ever done this. Uh, we've never done this actual. Let's, and let's go into me talking with. The sled, I haven't seen any article or video that says, here's the number one exercise to jump higher. But you're a coach. You're an athlete. We just did the slide together. Does it make sense why I have like a 40 inch vertical? Yes. Even though we only did the slide? Yes. Explain that to me. Uh, going back to the cue, because I think if, if you're intentionally, you know, thinking, drive forward with the sled, it's almost like, it's like a weighted jump almost yeah. uh, through the concentric motion. So it's like, when you were cueing that, for me, you know, I've done the sled quite a bit, but not to your level. And that's where I was thinking, I'm going, if, if he's cueing me on this, if Ben's saying this, you're constantly thinking that when you're pushing. So you're thinking that over and over and over again, and you might not even be, you know, consciously thinking it's just happening no matter what. So it's like, you're so coordinated to drive, to drive that load, and that's where it's gonna transfer to the jump. Yeah, and so when we're pushing, we're in that jumping position. Right. But then when we're going backward, we're in this position that's crucial for landing. For landing, yeah. So I'm in, I'm in basketball. Basketball, I can't just peak my vertical up in the off season and then go into the season and be destroyed. Right. For basketball, I need to be end of a game, fourth quarter, right. and I'm still bouncy. Yeah, and that, and that, so one, the endurance aspect, yeah. two, the the actual intent of accelerating as much as possible, and then three, that deceleration, yep. you absorb a little better, and then you can act, you can react quicker then as well. Yep. I'm trying to do the same thing you are when you get stronger yep. in a lift. Yep. You. You have to get stronger to jump higher. Uh, and, and, and so that was another thing too, was that when you were queuing in the beginning, drive through the big toe, drive through the big toe. High jumpers will always think about toe, at the toe off position. Okay, so toe off. Wow. Essentially big toe off. Yeah. And when I was thinking about that, if you jump off of one leg, so maybe not necessarily directly to the vertical, but to the court, you know, if you're jumping off of one leg, that cue, the first cue you gave me was essentially the toe off cue. It was focus on what your big toe is doing. Then your foot starts. To All right, let's go back over here and see what you guys think about that. I hope that that provides some clarity. So that first, <coughs> yeah, dude, I was so out of breath. I, I'll say that I was un, I, 
Jake actually thought he was going to puke uh, at the end of that. Uh, that was super, super intense. And we ended up doing, I want to say, probably two or three videos with him. I uh, picked this up from the airport, you know, went right into his gym. And within like 30 minutes, we were filming and, you know, had had lunch right afterwards. We ate and then we dipped and, and flew back home. And that was all one day. Um, we did something similar with Phil DeRue as well. It was sort of crazy. It was like we, we showed up and then just headed out right away. So one of the things that Knees Over Toes guy in that video, if you guys were, were listening, was like, he was giving us cues on driving through that big toe, uh, being as explosive as possible. Uh, and then on the pull back, he starts to talk about that point of deceleration, uh, strengthening the quad, strengthening the, the knee joint, strengthening the ankle. And I think a lot of that stuff holds a lot of merit where uh, it will pay off long term. It's going to help with your joint integrity. And it's something that we've been referring to lately as that structural bodybuilding where it's like, all right, if we can do these movements, uh, a movement like a back squat or a movement like a power snatch or a movement like a power clean, something like that, if we can do these movements, but then at the same time also have another pairing uh, or another exercise that can help us sort of grow that even further, you know, now we're seeing that with the sled. Now we're seeing that transfer pretty well. So I think that there's a lot, there's a lot of, of credence to what he was talking about. Clearly he's got a 40 inch vertical. He can dunk. He's, you know, what is he probably 33 years old? He's, he's in great shape. So I think that that's another just big factor is like it, it can work absolute wonders in your overall performance. Okay. So now let's get into, we've got another video that we're going to be reacting to one more of these sweet ones. Let's get on here over to this part here. Okay. There we go. We got one more for you. And we can just hold these handles. And when we get into our place, what we want to see is about a six to eight inch counter movement and explode. And so we want to react as soon so as we So this video is from down. two years ago. Go right back up. Okay? And that's going to help you. It's probably 255 at that point. And your body's going to learn the depth that it needs to be in to react rapidly. Like now, that Daft Punk t-shirt. Because the bands are pulling you back down, the load is going to be a little bit higher. So it's going to help your nervous system recruit a little bit more effectively. For the alternative, I like to do quarter squat and jumps and this is like a thrower's world standard right if you watch any of the best throwers in the world they are doing quarter squat and jumps all the time when they're starting to peak and the reason is is because it helps i was out of breath starting to get pretty out of breath here of a shot put oh go follow us on strength. tiktok and you see that plug the there's that there's sam we just talked about sam getting heightened this is a difficult movement it's loaded so you've got to be strong enough to handle it. You've got to be coordinated enough to handle it. And what I like to do here, just a little quarter squat and jump. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, nice and stiff. All right, let's get back to, let's get back to chatting that up. And I think that, you know, that those are two exercises that we still use a lot. Okay, so just doing a quarter squat and jump uh, with that barbell is going to be absolutely fantastic. Then you add in the the, the banded jumps. <clears throat> I think the banded jumps are freaking also fantastic because you're getting into a position where the, the weight is pulling you down or the band is going to be pulling you down at a higher speed. And when it's pulling you down at that high speed, you have to be ready to react quickly. And it's cheap. It's easy. Um, it, it's it's going to put you in a really good position to change that center of mass and then lead into that big vertical jump. And I think that the other un, unsung factor with both of these movements is that when you're looking at, and I, I almost wanted to show, I, I wanted to show you guys another one of these exercises. I'm going to see if I can get it lined up before we actually start talking about it. It's like, there's, there's a lot to be said. Okay. I think I got it actually right now is like, there's a lot to be said for mimicking the vertical jump aspect so that you can actually test af effectively when you get into uh, when you get into actually testing that vertical jump. So I wanted to show you another another interesting one from this throwback. This again, this is from two years ago. I'm gonna fast forward this. Okay, so watch what I do here. If you see where my foot is, my heel is not supported. So right there, my heel is below the plate. Now 
I go down and I want to keep that heel higher. So that's going to create a little bit more stiffness in my ankle. Okay. And so I have to be a little bit more targeted even on my quad uh, and my glute in that position to create the co-contractions that are needed in the knee to be stable. Okay. So right there, you can see that pretty clearly what I'm trying to get at. Throughout my posterior chain. Right. I like to utilize this exercise almost as a warm up to my really, really ballistic movements. You can do this for four to five sets. You don't have to load it up. You can use just the bar. You can put 25s on the outside. Make sure that they. Yep. Yeah, so that's where it's like I really, really enjoy using that pretty regularly with with athletes because it's a different feeling through your through your posterior chain when you're doing single leg squats you'll feel it in your back you'll feel it in your glutes and, and you're going to be extremely sore um but then you add in that heel supported or heel unsupported and it's going to help your your calves and the soleus especially is one of the key muscles around sprint speed uh, around jumping as high as as possible so it's like if we can train that soleus to be more you know, be more effective, that's going to be important. Now, this last thing that I want to share with you guys, this is going to be an interesting one because what, what we're going to be seeing here is that when we're looking at, okay, so when we're looking at research, right, one of the big factors is, okay, what is, what does research tell us? So a lot of people will say, well, there's not any, any evidence that weightlifting movements will actually improve your athletic ability. Okay, so let's just look at first, let's take that step. What is going to demonstrate athletic ability in a lab? Okay, we got the vertical jump. We can do like uh, a shuttle. You know, we can do a sprint. Okay, we can do a, a squat jump where you're starting without a counter movement. You can do a bound. Okay, so you're doing some type of shuttle run. You're doing uh, a sprint. You're doing a squat and jump like a vertical jump test, you're doing a, squ a, a squat jump, and then you're doing a bound, okay? So those are all pretty, pretty good uh, examples of how to determine athletic power development. Those are, those are like the tried and true, all right, this is what we need to use. So in this paper, and I wanted to just show you uh, and, and go through this, is comparing the effectiveness of short-term vertical jump versus weightlifting programs on power development. And so what they did was they took a group of individuals and they did weightlifting specific training. Okay. Then they took another group of individuals and they ended up taking uh, plyometric based training or vertical jump based training. And then they gave them six weeks to train. Okay. So now in that six weeks, and I want to go down and just show you this real quick before we get back up here in that six weeks, let me see if it's this one. I think it's okay. So this is what the workouts looked like, right? If you see, they got a hang power clean, they did a power snatch, and they did a half squat. They did four sets of everything right here. Weeks one through three, then weeks four through six. Now, for the vertical jump, they did weighted double leg jumps on a cluster set basis. They did 45 centimeter depth drops, and they did half squat. Okay, so they did a more traditional um, plyometric in the vertical jump. They did more traditional weightlifting derivatives in, in the other group. So they did that for six weeks, right? So... The interesting part here is that if we look at this, okay, so 26 recreationally active men, okay, so just let's highlight that, recreationally active, okay, and what I want to do is that when we're talking about the best exercise to increase your vertical jump, you know, we heard what Ben Patrick said, we went over that video, we saw some of the exercises that I use, the single leg with the heel unsupported, the um, even looking at like the squat and jump with the bar, the squat and jump with the with the bands. Those are great. Those are something that everybody could be using. Now we're going to look at. All right. Let's compare these 26 recreationally active men. OK, recreationally active men. That means they're untrained. Essentially, they barely work out twice a week, maybe. They were randomly allocated to a weightlifting group or to a vertical jump group. OK randomly allocated they were not selected like oh this guy's weightlifted before he'll go over here it was totally random okay then they took them they tested them at the beginning they tested them at the end of the test and so what were they testing and you can see that assess pre and post training okay so they were testing the counter movement jumps so that's like a vertical jump the squat jump so they're starting without a counter movement the depth jump Okay, so how much force are they producing when they drop off of uh, that 45 centimeters? A 20-meter sprint, as we mentioned, a 20-meter sprint, and the 505 agility test. So these are all great tests for determining athletic power. 
Okay, so we're going to see how fast can they run side to side, how fast can they sprint, what's their vertical, what's their squat jump, and then how quickly can they throw on the brakes. So there was a significant main effect of time observed for the three vertical jumps, the counter movement, the squat jump, and the depth drop. There was also a significant main effect of time observed for zero to five meters and zero to 20 sprint times, okay? So they got faster, they ran faster. And the 505 agility test time, okay? So let's look at the 505 agility test time, also improved. They were all shown to improve after the training, irrespective of training approach adopted by coaches or athletes. So what this tells us is that plyometric training, Okay, doing the jumps, doing the squat and jumps, doing the half squats increases vertical, helps you run faster, help, helps you produce power faster in the depth drop, all of that. Clear. Shuttle, sprints, jump. Do vertical jump training. Okay, that's what we do in peak strength on, on athlete day, right? That's exactly what we do. Now, they also improved, this was an additional, they also improved substantially in the weightlifting group. So remember what I want to point out here is that th there's another factor here is like, now we're looking at a group of 26 recreational men. So 13 of them were testing in the weightlifting group. 13 were in the vertical jump group. Okay. So if you look at it, there was the, the weightlifting group demonstrated larger increases in peak power output during the counter movement. Um, yeah, you can sort of see that. And squat and jump. They had no significant between group differences uh, that were measured. So what that means is that there was no difference on the improvement from the vertical jump group to the weightlifting group. Why does that matter? What matters is they both substantially increased in the vertical jump, in the squat and jump, in the depth drop, in the zero to 20 sprint and in the 505 shuttle, they both substantially increased. Why am I so hung up on this? Okay, so we have people occasionally will say there's no research that shows that weightlifting is effective for sports performance. This paper is one of probably 150 that I have in my phone right now that will show you indeed they they had a substantial improvement in these tests. And on top of that, all they were doing was hang power clean. We can go back down and just look at this workout, right? This workout is bland. It's like super normal, super normal, right? Hang power clean, power snatch, half squat, four sets of four, literally. So they're doing power cleans, power snatches. They should be doing power snatches first, by the way. And then half squats. And they did that for six weeks. So all they did was power snatch. They did it twice a week. All they did was power snatch, power clean from a hang and back squat. And they saw a substantial improvement in recreationally trained men. So this is another factor. A lot of people will say, this is the big one, okay? This one's the big one. A lot of people will say, it takes too long to teach weightlifting movements. It takes too long. But this paper will show you that 13 dudes who train recreationally learned in six weeks they learned how to hang power clean or power snatch or squat fast enough to see just as much improvement in their 20 sprint in their 20 meter sprint in their 505 shuttle in their vertical jump their squat jump and their depth jump they learned how to do those weightlifting derivatives in six weeks at an effective level to improve their physical output of power at the same rate that plyometrics did so if we look at it, you know, and, and we start to think about this and you go, there's coaches that say this takes too long to teach. How long does it take to teach a recreationally active person? What are we doing? So on top of that, if you look at proper programming or a proper workout split, if we're trying to increase athletic power based off of this study, and if we're trying to improve vertical jump capacity, we should be training legs very effectively. And if we're looking at, okay, we know plyometric training will improve your vertical jump. It's going to improve your power development. We know based off of this one paper, there's a million others like this one, not a million, but there's a lot that also show that weightlifting derivatives increase your power development and you can learn it in less than six weeks so much so that it makes you run a shuttle faster. So you didn't even test, you didn't even train the shuttle. You just 
train the shuttle. You just tested on the shuttle. You didn't even train the skill of the shuttle run. So if you have an effective split laid out, which is what we're doing inside of peak strength, in peak strength, we've got leg power day, upper power day, athlete day, impulse day. Now you're looking at it, you're training that four for four, and you're actually getting more effective, and you're getting plyometric movements and those weightlifting derivatives. So I think this is like one of my favorite ones to just bring up as like, how can we still listen to this argument of uh, they take too long to learn? Do they really take too long to learn? Or do you just not want to actually coach your athletes? Like, I think there's a little bit pointing out like, yo, if in six weeks, some lazy dudes can run faster and run their shuttle time better because they're cleaning and squatting and snatching. I think that's probably what everybody should be doing. Okay, so before we continue with the q and I just wanted to share that if you're interested in a more deep dive discussion on all aspects of training and coaching specific to your goals, all you guys have to do is consider becoming a channel member. Once you sign up as a channel member, we meet every single Friday where I give you direct tips on improving your training. Uh, and it's a really positive group. Everybody's sort of in there, super motivated. We're really chatty. Uh, I'll break down a couple different research papers. And then I talk about what you guys can do with this in training. You know, a good example would be this paper that we just went over. Go do power snatches, hand cleans, and squats. You're going to jump higher. Okay, do that for six weeks. Uh, it's 10 bucks a month. All you have to do is sign up at the YouTube uh, in the YouTube community or the YouTube link on our videos, or you can just go to garage strength.com or go to garage strengths, YouTube channel. And you can also sign up there. Uh, so it's a full one hour lecture and discussion for less than the price of a cup of coffee, except not my cappuccinos. They're a little bit more expensive. Click the join button. If you're on desktop or click the link in the description to become a channel member today. But if you don't want to spend that 10 bucks, you guys can still check out our Garage Strength podcast. We're filming one tonight on YouTube or any podcast app. Just check the link in the description. So I wanted to share that uh, with everybody. Dude, I will say that a lot of the, the stuff that we're doing inside of that is, you know, you can take this this paper here that we just showed and say, all right, this data is saying this. And I think the other interesting part along these lines is that when we're trying to lay out our, you know, when we're developing peak strength and our programming that we do here at Garage Strength, and we're trying to increase, you know, get somebody like Sam Mattis, because we talked about him earlier. Um, hang on, I'll, I'll talk to you, Keith, here shortly. You know, what we do, Keith, and maybe this is for you, is like, I take these papers, I break them down even more in depth, and then I'll tell you how I took these papers and I'm testing them right now in training. And then what's interesting is I can teach you like, okay, this is how I'm testing this out in training. Uh, and then basically three to six months later, it's going to be in the app. And I think that's the cool part for us is like, look, our mission, our 100% mission as a company is to provide easy access to freak training. So that means in these talks, you have easy access, easy access to freak training. When you watch our videos, you got easy access to freak training. When you come train here at Garage Strength on site, you have easy access to freak training. When you go inside of peak strength, you have easy access to freak training and you're getting all of that research based research backed training protocols that are also proven. You know, we've gotten people to the Olympics. We've gotten people to the NFL. We've gotten people to the absolute you know, pinnacle essentially of the sports. So you have direct access to that all at your fingertips. And that's, you know, that's just one thing that we want to continuously provide uh, for you guys is, and also just having direct access to us to, to improve your overall training situation because it's fun. It's, it's enjoyable. So George Bogarin, let's go into these questions now. So we got a whole bunch of questions that I see as a D one, Steven Ernest, I think you were on Instagram. If I remember correctly, um, Steven Ernest came, came in and says, as a D1 punter kickoff guy, are there a few movements that you think are a necessity in my program? Okay, so I would say you're going to be on the fly quite a bit. Um, well, full depth squat patterns, first of all. Um, second, I would say like uh, sled sprints. Sled sprints would be really, really good, or hill sprints would also be another great one to help with your ability to, for, for coverage. And then obviously single leg squats, that's going to be one of the biggest factors with with um Im improving way i'm just really beef which who did your research was it keist and sam with crayons man he's just trolling us he's coming at keist hard beef which is coming at keist hard uh r2 said hello i have been thinking that our hip thrusts good movements for football and how they help 
and are there better movements to replace them? So I think the hip thrust, the glute bridge, those, those exercises, like th- those movements are decent, right? But I just want to bring up like some of my complaints. I think first of all, to like really benefit from them, you have to load the shit out of them. Like 500 plus pounds, even females, 450 to 500 plus pounds, dudes, you know, 550 pounds to get a big time pump through the hips, through the glutes. I I just struggle because I'm like, really? D- is that really the best way to target the glutes? And then you look at, you know, something like a single leg squat where you're going to be using like a quarter of the load. So your nervous system is not getting totally shot. Uh, so like the hip thrusts are good. They're, they're fine. They're solid. But I do back squats, full range of motion. I would do uh, single leg squats also. And, and I think that that's going to be a little bit more effective. Um, it's hard to imagine someone talking down to others when they use your research and they haven't even passed high school. Wait, it's hard to imagine someone talking down to others when they use your research. I'm not sure what that means, beef f- which. Uncle Fester, what's up, dude? When is the running weightlifting video going to come out? The running weightlifting. So, like, strength training for marathon? Is that what you're saying? Or strength training for running? Um, which one are you talking about? How can I improve my agility in one month? So this is from Samuel. So Samuel, we just broke down that study that shows, and that was uh, peer reviewed that if you could do a power snatch, hang power, clean back squats, you'll improve your five zero five shuttle. So what I would recommend, first of all, I would say go to peak strength. If you need to improve your agility, let's say you're in football, right? And you can click on football. I want to train. And then football will tell you how are you going to train. You're going to train as a skilled position player like a running back. Well, that's going to be one of the best programs to help you with your agility. And then you've got to do it four days a week for a month. You have to train four days a week for a month. If you train four days a week for a month, that's going to prove out that you can be successful. Okay. And that's going to prove out that you can hit a PR. It's going to prove out that you can be more agile because you're putting in that time and effort. Uh, So that would be my answer there. So how can I prevent hip dropping when sprinting? That's from Samuel. So I would say that would lead into some type of trunk control, Samuel. Um, Are you doing drop dumbbell snatches into hip locks? Uh, Are you doing any other type of uh, training that would would potentially help with that? I'd say single leg squats. Hip lock's going to help quite a bit. Uh, Also, I do believe, obviously, the single leg squat, some type of like overhead lunge can help as well with that with that hip stability. Um, Yeah, let me know if that helps. Hey, coach, I suffer wrist pains whenever I do cleans or front squats. Okay, wrist pains whenever I do cleans or front squats, and no matter how I position my hands, they still hurt. Any tips on how or what I could do? That's from Ezam Osmi. So Ezam, what I would ask is. How frequently are you doing it? Are they more narrow? Are they more wide? Um, And then I would say, if you could do them three days a week, I'd bet they would loosen up quite a bit more. And As long as you're not catching anything like here. As long as you're able to catch with those elbows through, I think that you'd be in a better position. You'd have a little bit more mobility through that shoulder, which in turn would lead to uh, less wrist pain. Rambler, I've been to a CrossFit gym. Uh, gym. I've seen guys can hang clean 225 pounds, but they can barely jump on a 24-inch box. Is this genetic? I think to a point, twitchiness is genetic. So let's use this example. To a point, because I, I, I think that everybody can get just rung up out of this, right? Oh, what kind of plyometric exercise should I do for a one-mile runner? Plyometric exercise, single leg bounds, hurdle hops. Bounds for distance, skips for distance, skips for height. Um, will you do more videos on conditioning for different sports? These are great questions that we should. I hope Jason's writing these video ideas down. These are great. Going back to the the video that we were, um, or the discussion that we were just happening. All right, in from New Zealand. What's up? Um, do I think that that jump height is genetic? I think that. There's there's going to be a limiting factor, but the limiting factor you would be able to achieve when you're like 26, 27. Like, so there's a long way to get to that limiting factor. And one of the things that I've sort of noticed is that people who who will say like, well, I'm just not like genetically gifted. They've never really gone like four years and they train for four days a week. Like 
Train four days a week for four straight years. My Instagram is falling. Train four days a week for four years. And then tell me that you didn't get stronger. Tell me that you didn't get more explosive. Tell me that you didn't jump higher. Tell me you didn't bench more. Tell me you didn't run faster. If you're doing the same, if you're doing like really, really good programming, right? And a lot of the, the discussion is, okay, a lot of people say like, well, you know, with peak strength, I, I want to be a better athlete. So clearly you want to be faster. You want to be more explosive. But you're a little concerned. You've tried other programs in the past. You've tried other stuff and you're not sure if peak strength is going to work for you. And then you don't think about it. What if you trained four days a week for four years on a program that's built by people who train world-class athletes for four years? You do it. Imagine how good you're going to be. So now you can get to that point. You can start to see, oh, wow, four days a week for four years. And then you start to lose any doubt you start to say wow i can commit to this i can do this and that's what you need to do right like you need to actually sit there and go all right so if if jump height is genetic to a point for sure but you can take a gumby and get them to clean 275 and they're still going to jump higher like that's going to happen you're going to wring out any bit of twitchiness and that elasticity you're going to get it out of them but they've got to do the work they have to do the work there's no way around it uh yeah, so I've been meaning to ask you on a live if you can send Mr. This is if you can send me a workout plan. I'm a football player and I've been meaning to ask. So come on, JJ. Come on, JJ. If you go, I want to say right now, there's some uh, like football templates that you could pick up. Um, what could you do for football as a tight end? Yeah, you, know, you got to again work on some of the explosive position off the off the line you got to be able to to execute something like a power snatch from a one box a hand clean do the single leg squats focus on sled sprints do some hill sprints that's going to help drastically improve that overall power output that tight ends need you're also going to be jumping in a unilateral position so you got to have that trunk control you got to be able to enhance all of those aspects those are those are some of those big key factors so keese just asked a great con uh, a great comment here was that keese is going have you ever done a podcast on genetics and talent versus hard work? And we've never really discussed it. And I think the the hard part around discussing that is that there's not as many, there's not as much like clear, there's a decent amount of research on it, but it's not as clear, right? And a lot of people will say like, oh, well, they'll always use like these one-off scenarios like to try and prove out like a full theorem. And it's like, dude, you can't just use one-offs. Yes, talent exists. You know, you can have a freak of nature that's really good at a sport, but also that freak of nature that's really good at a sport will still only go so far. Now, they're going to go, you know, farther than the non-freak of nature who uh, also doesn't work hard, right? Like, they'll go further just because of talent, but the hard work will likely get to a point where the hard worker is going to catch or defeat that person. So it's hard to, like, ver to really... Um, quantify that in far, as far as a discussion, but I think it's it's something that I think a podcast that would be a great that'd be a great piece of content because people are so willing to just throw in the towel because they're not athletic. Ah, I'm not that athletic. I can't do that, you know. Or they're so willing to sit behind a computer and say, you know, using the Sam the same example. Oh well, Sam Sam's huge. He's probably on steroids. Really. Okay, so what about the 25 times he gets tested every year by USADA that you can go and check on the USADA website? Okay, well, that doesn't matter. Or, or maybe Sam, since he was 13 years old, trained four days a week minimum since he was 13. Well, how old is he now? He's 29. Do the math. 16 times freaking 50 times 4 is 200 times 16. Gosh, I'm so bad at math. 2,000. Um, let's say 2000 and then uh yeah so i mean we're looking at training session wise what is that like 3200 training sessions 3200 times in the weight room dude that's a lot of freaking workouts holy shit and that doesn't even include his throwing sessions all right let's get back up here i use your program with a five-day split and it's the off season this is from juho kasari 
My football practices are on Thursday and Sunday. Is it okay to go to the gym on Monday to Friday and have both gym and football practice at Thursday? Yeah, I think that's okay. And that would be good because you'd still have Saturday off. I think that'd be fine. Um, and if you get fatigued, you can pick out one of those days to move around. Maybe you do lift on a Saturday. You can you could do that for sure. Juho, I just saw Juho, you comment again. Um Beef Witch, of course, is coming in saying, I'm willing to bet that Sam is on steroids and pays USADA. He's not paying USADA with his discus salary. I don't think he's got the money from throwing discus. What's your opinion on neck harnesses for strengthening the neck? Uh, this is from Kiripa Sama. Neck harnesses are great. Four-way neck, neck work is good. I think there's a lot of different ways you can improve neck, neck strength. I think you can improve neck strength just from doing weightlifting, technical coordination movements, power snatches, high snatch pulls. Uh, power cleans, hang cleans, anything along those lines. I think there's a there's a lot of ways that you can improve the neck, um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's 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 reasonable to say that's a that's a good one. What are the best ways to stay injury free? Rather, decrease the likelihood of getting injured. I think the the first step in decreasing the likelihood of getting injured is preparation, right? So if you can prepare uh, and train as hard as possible, and then you're doing things, you know, so what we call it is the TAR method. You got training, you got accountability, you got recovery, okay? So if you're training hard and you're holding yourself accountable and you're focusing on recovery as well, you're covering the whole entire world of sports performance. So you're doing your mobility, you're sleeping, you're eating well, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, you're following a good program. When you're following a good program, that periodization should be set up so that, you know, look at peak strength, right? Leg power day, upper body power day, athlete day, rest, impulse, upper body. So it's based on the fact that you're going to have a decent amount of rest periods. Um, and I think that that's something that, that goes without saying or that goes sort of um, under the radar is that your periodization should play a big time role with how well you're able to, to recover. Hello coach. Could you please touch on how much increase in vertical is achievable? This is from MK. So how much can you increase your vert in an untrained individual in terms of explosive training? So based off of what they were saying in this paper with recreationally trained individuals, remember there was 13 recreational trained dudes. Okay. So in this paper, um, let's go back to this right here. Hang on. Let me bring this up. Okay. So if we bring this one up here, whoops, let's go here and we go down and we look at uh, vertical jump had a, uh, or the vertical jump group. Okay. So they had about a 12.7% increase, um, counter movement jump. They had about a 10% increase right here. Okay, so in the weightlifting group, 10% increase. So what you can do is say, all right, if I've got a 40-inch vert, I mean, that's absurd. Uh, but let's say 10% increase. I'm trying to look through this as well. So if you if you just use the math off of this paper, let's say that you want to look like you want to get like a 7% improvement. I think that that's a very, very reasonable means of... Uh, what you want to look for is like a 7% issue of improvement over six to eight weeks if you're not that trained as, as an athlete. If you're more trained, it's going to take longer, right? It's going to it's going to take a very long time, okay? Keith just came in. I see a lot of coaches talk about corrective exercises that they program into general SNC. Is that something that you think about? So something I think about often with SN, or with, with corrective exercise, got you racing, I'll get to you next here, um, is that, I believe that there's a lot of lifts like a single leg squat, a front squat, a back squat, pause, pause, dumbbell bench, snatches in the hole, cleans in the hole. I think a lot of those movements are corrective. I also think that there's corrective exercises you can do to prime uh, yourself. If And John Giacalone calls them from Mobility Doc, he calls them primers. Uh, so if you can hit those primers effectively, that's stuff uh, that can help you function at a higher degree. Now, we don't have that currently inside the app, but we will eventually. It's going to take time. We're building it up to make, to make it that masterpiece, but we'll get there. 
Finally, back in the States, repping Garage Strength Sweater and using the app. Feeling great. Can't wait for the knee injury to be 100%. Thank you again, Coach. Eli, thanks for supporting us. Love it. That's awesome. Send us pictures. Tag us on Instagram. I see a lot of coaches. Okay, sorry, Keist. Uh, gotcha Racing. Hey, Dane, I started wrestling season Monday, and is there anything uh, that I should be eating to help? I've heard kimchi is good for wrestling, so I eat a lot of it. I wrestle at 150 pounds, and I use peak strength. I would say the big thing there, uh, gotcha, is like – 40 grams of fiber. Make sure you're getting 200 plus grams of protein every single day. Uh, make sure you're eating a fair amount of carbohydrates as well. I think a lot of times wrestlers, when they first get in season, they're just focused on cutting carbs. It's like, dude, save the cutting of carbs for like two days before weigh-ins. I'm telling you, that's a big thing. Let's see here. How much better are single leg Nordics compared to double leg Nordics? And how often should we do single legs? Dude, single leg Nordics? Who is doing single leg Nordics? Do you know how hard, I mean, Ferris Khan is probably doing single leg Nordics because he's an absolute savage. But how many people out there are actually doing a single leg Nordic? I would we should take a poll on that one. Um, that's sort of a lame poll, though, because no one's going to answer that. I have issues cycling early out of a sprint. How can I improve low heel recovery during my acceleration? Okay, so this is a question from Samuel. Low heel recovery during acceleration. How old are you? Do you really need a low heel recovery to accelerate to the highest degree? Like, are you explosive enough or strong enough to hit that low heel? I would, I would want to see you sprint if you're actually using a low heel. Um, I mean, there's some world class sprinters that don't even use a low heel. Uh, but you're, if you're cycling early out of a sprint, that's probably something to do with the, your. I would say the way you're projecting. Do you ever have hamstring issues? Possibly. Uh, are you early? Are you too head down early in the sprint, and then you compensate by bringing the chest up later on? And then you know, does that does a start bug your hamstring ever? Uh, that would be another question. Another question I would bring up would be. Um, just look at your torso angle. How long are you holding that torso forward? What are some alternatives to a 16-year-old MMA fighter who doesn't know how to Olympic lift? Come on, that's a slam dunk, comma, or Kiripa Sama. Kiripa Sama is asking, he doesn't know how to do his weightlifting derivatives. The, the technical coordination movements are too hard. We just went over that paper that in six weeks, rec recreationally active men learn how to clean or snatch and squat so effectively that they improve their sprints and shuttles. And Kiripa, what I would say is that inside peak strength, we've got technical videos that are going to help you learn that. Uh, we've got videos all over our YouTube channel, um, all on the YouTube channel that are going to help you learn those lifts. So I think you can learn them. Gotcha Racing, oh yeah, will you ever put a nutrition part into Peak Strength or make it an app of its own? That would be very helpful. There's a lot of crap for stuff like that on the internet. Trevor, are you listening? Just eat chicken and rice and drink protein shakes. I agree. I'm with Beef Witch. I've always wanted to do like a Peak Strength video where I eat chicken, broccoli, and rice for a full week straight at every meal. Every meal. Every meal. An app that has wrestling nutrition like Peak Strength would be so nice. That would be freaking phenomenal. I agree with you on that. What's a good lifting workout for boxers? So we've got two or three fantastic videos on Peak Strength for boxing-based training. I think the big aspect is <clears throat> focusing on rotational power, focusing on unilateral strength with the upper body with like dumbbell presses that are alternating back and forth. Make sure you're crushing those pull-ups. Do a lot of explosive push-ups as well, and that's going to lead uh, to overall general performance. Um, I think that's a big question that I have for everybody in the chat. What is their their main sport? Is it is it combat? Is it football? Is it uh, are you guys more into soccer potentially? Because I, I think we're getting a lot of different questions from a lot of different sports, and that's something I'm, I'm interested to know. Fab Mani with a great question up top. I've been following some of your athletic and plyometric plyo training four to five days a week and i've added the quiz jump i've noticed a lot of difference on the basketball court i'm 47 fab money thanks a lot for that great feedback that's awesome to hear keep smashing it um i think that i think the interesting part with the quiz jump is how low it is um oh geez is how low low that position is if you guys want to comment challenge video how long should Dane eat chicken, broccoli, rice diet? One month or one week? 
you all should open a location in Colorado Springs. We've got both the Olympic Training Center and me. Where do you live in the Springs? I I was just out there this summer. Gotcha. I was out there for like a week. Beef witch coming in. Breakfast protein shake, fifty grams. Greek yogurt. Let's see. It's Greek yogurt is not seventy grams. Come on. Drink coffee. Absolutely. Okay, let's get back up top. Hello, what what are some of the basic plyos I could start incorporating in my routine from zero? Step one, single leg jump rope or even double leg jump rope. Step two, squat and jumps to a box. You get a little squat down and jump up, squat down and jump up. So it's like this here. Boom. Nice and easy. Boom. As I hit the mic. Okay. Nice and easy. That's a great way to do uh, the first two plyometric movements that you want to learn. Then you can get into jump step ups. You can do easy jump lunges. Uh, you can do just little little uh, bunny hops with your calves. Mainly focus on that soleus. Let me know if that helps. I think that... Make sure you guys are commenting on that survey. Don't be too kind to Dane. Give him a full month. I think the interesting part with the chicken, broccoli, and rice, I think a lot of the reason why bodybuilders do that, and Stefan Guyane, who was one of like the first bloggers that I just... Dude, I would read every blog he would put up. And so back in like 05, you know, I'm really dating myself where first I talked about AOL Instant Messenger. Now I'm talking about blogosphere. So when when blogs were big from like 04 to 2010, dude, I would wait for blogs to drop. It was like it was like YouTube videos. You'd just wait and wait for people to put out these new blogs. And you'd be like, yo, did you see? There's a dude named Matthew Stone. I don't know if he still blogs. Uh, I think it was called like a 180 degree health or something but i would read all these guys blogs all the time and the one that i was reading uh, quite a bit was stefan guyane fantastic i want to say it was whole health source uh was his was his website i wonder i think he still has a website but he would say that a lot of the, the success around nutrition of like chicken broccoli and rice actually has to do with the fact that a lot of people don't overeat when they eat the same thing all the time. They start to have like a bland flavoring and so they don't eat as much. When food tastes really good, you eat more of it. And so that leads to overeating. Whereas chicken, broccoli, and rice, it's pretty bland. You don't eat a lot of it. And that's what helps uh, maintain like the caloric intake being lower. Uh, so that's like an interesting aside uh, from Stefan Guyane. Karipa Sam. Uh, yeah, try kettlebells for MMA. They're great for combat sports, absolutely. After eating four days of that, you should be at enough deficit that you can eat a day of whatever you want. I think eating four days of chicken, broccoli, and rice, I actually would think, I've wanted to do another one. Like, Let's say I run to work. It's like an eight-mile run. I run to work. I run to and from work every day for a week, 16 miles a day. Could I do that? That'd be another crazy one. Do you think there's an advantage for those who are taller and sprinting? I see that shorter athletes can have a great start. But in the end, the taller one comes up on top. So this is a good question because you could bring up the Polish the Polish female sprinter. I forget her name. I want to say she got like third at Indoor Worlds two years ago in the 60. And what ends up happening is that you'll see a lot of shorter sprinters success. Their success rate is very high in the 60. And it, it takes them longer to develop in the 100. And so she really, I think this year she might have gotten top five i think she might have even won europeans um but it took her a lot longer to transfer over to the hundred with that being said christian coleman's not that big he's not a tall guy um also shakari richardson is not that tall either you know that's another aspect is richardson's not that big of an individual relative to some of the other female relative to like Elaine Thompson, who is taller. Shelly Ann Fraser Price is short compared to, you know, Majinga, Cambungi, yeah, Savoda, uh, and and relative to Fraser Price as well. So so we've just got to think about um it's so dependent upon the individuals uh and how twitchy they are. So Samuel came back and he answered. So two wait, two cups of yogurt is 24 grams of protein. You can eat one cup and be full. That's for sure. I agree with that. So 
Samuel plays soccer and was under the impression that low heel recovery would help him accelerate faster. Do I need to focus heavily on sprint technique as a soccer player? I think you should focus on sprint technique as a soccer player with a soccer ball. Run your sprints with a soccer ball. There's days that you should run without a soccer ball, but I also think there's days that you should run uh, with a soccer ball. Uh, for overall athleticism, Nork, Nork Vardanian is not five foot six. In your opinion, what would be a good vertical jump? For women, anything over 25 to 26 inches. For men, anything over 31. Um, something along those lines. Did you watch the ball? Cow? Wait, ball cow fought recently? No, I have not watched that lately. Dude, I thought he retired. Um, hi, Dane. Hope you're doing well. I'm wondering how to increase mobility in my hips. The biggest way to increase mobility in your hips, I believe, is going to be couch stretch. I believe hip 90-90. I believe pigeon pose. I believe um, even just doing like deficit split squats. Those are going to be some real key things that you can use to improve. So Len just came in. Combat, basketball, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, wrestling, baseball, mountain biking. For me, 47. He's Wait, 6'10 and 17 Six eight. Oh, those are oh, those are his kids. Man, they're huge. Len, they're huge. David, uh, hope you're doing well. I'm wondering how to increase mobility in my hips and ankles. So I just told you about the hips. For ankles, I'd say distraction work, PVC pipe roller, uh, serratus walks on the on the wall. Also going to be pay, help you pay off. Will pay off a lot. Do you think there's an advantage for those who are taller in spring? Sorry, I already answered that one. Um, next time you're here, I'm totally. Okay, so you're you're by Falcon. Okay, so I, I see what you're saying uh, with where you're at in the area. How to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching with you from New Zealand. Love the content. That's Kenneth Eke. So, Kenneth, what I would say is uh, are you trying to do a one-on-one -on -one as in like I coach you in the session? Are you trying to have me write your custom programming or are you trying to – uh, do like a business consult. That all will will play into that. You could email us support at garagefrank.com to find out more about that. Got you racing. What time is the members lives on Fridays? I've thought about joining, but you have practice. So one of the things with the members lives is that we film it. And when we film it, it's recorded and it stays on YouTube so that you can come back to it and refer back. So even if you're not present in the broadcast, you can come back and you can also save questions for the next week. Um, and when you come in that, that following week, you know, you can ask a whole bunch. Uh, I also wanted to point out to you guys, I am heading out to Estonia. So I'm going to Estonia tomorrow. If anyone is in the in Estonia, like, let me know. Um, I'm probably going to be going out for a couple runs while I'm there. I've got a, I've got a couple different, uh, I have to give a presentation on developing a uh, an elite throws group, I have to give some presentations on on running like the throws based business or uh, or a gym business as well. So those are some things I'm going to be doing uh, over in Estonia for the the discus discus. I think it's the European Throws Conference is what it's called. Garrett Canner's there. I'm pretty excited to to present. Let's see. What are the best ways that you think, what are, what do you think are good ways to increase kicking power for kickboxing? So this is a good one because recently when I was on, uh, Will Calhoun, so it's called go Remy, uh, his podcast, uh, he asked me that question for soccer. And I said, there's some paper, there's some recent paper. So there's a paper that showed that post potentiation. So in Muay Thai fighters, if they did a four rep back squat max, they saw a drastic increase in their power output with like a, a high kick and a low kick. Okay, there's another one where they, they I think they do like a, a explosive lunge or something like that. So doing, and that's where I think a lot of fighters miss out on is there's ways to like in an acute setting immediately have a positive impact on your power output as a kicker, like kicking. So that's something that you need to, need to think about. Um, Keith doesn't want to go to Estonia. He's afraid. <coughs> I would do plyometric exercises before weightlifting, probably, in most cases. Trying to put together a preseason program for water polo and rugby. Uh, just hit you up on email. Yeah, so if you would need a, a preseason program that I would build out for you, um, 
you can email support at garagestrength.com how to, and and we'll be able to answer hey i want dane to to make this program uh how long it could be and, and you'll get like an intake survey and all that stuff to take care of it so that's usually what what we end up doing um exercises to increase compression squeezing strength for bouldering so what i would i would do here is like some type of rope climbs i would do pull-ups on a like a medicine ball or something like that um i would try to do a lot of sled work with fatter fatter ropes uh, i would try and do a ton of rowing uh, but then also a lot of squeezing from the abs and from the pecs and if you can do all of that work that's going to pay off big time uh and then obviously just a ton of grip work ton ton of grip work uh, that's going to also help you develop that that bouldering power um yeah you guys are asking a lot of good questions today uh Let's see. I'm just going back up to the top. I got sick. The app keeps moving. Can we change that? Yeah, that's a big question right now. Um, you could email us and we could help you with that D fierce. I oh, you like my cousins. Keep it up. Beef witch. Okay. Best exercise for jump is about parallel box jump with resistance bands, about 20% of barbell weight for running two legs jump. Um, okay. So does anybody else have any other questions here? Um, survey is in i believe i can't really see it let me see whoops shoot i think i just accidentally ended the poll i hope i didn't but i think i did uh what do you think about new oh geez gosh don't even talk about stuff like that yeah hit me up in that email all right i'm gonna get going because i gotta get ready for training yo you guys thanks for tuning in this week I might get on the uh, on that chicken, broccoli, and rice. Is there any difference between a normal, conventional deadlift and deadlifts with a snatch grip as far as sports performance? I think snatch grip with a snatch grip deadlift would probably be better than a conventional deadlift. Samuel is raw cheese good for athletes? Absolutely, raw cheese is fantastic. Very high calcium content, uh, and actually, usually, if it's if it's from Ayrshire cows, they will have a higher protein content as well periodization for the vertical jump as in when do i focus on power output i would say try and spend the first four weeks uh building strength uh try to get into more weightlifting derivatives in the second phase go into peak strength that app and you can get a program to help specifically especially volleyball volleyball program to help with their jumping my final question what are your top sports somebody i'll answer this real quickly because somebody asked me this last week um Somebody said last week, what what sport would you want to coach if you weren't, uh, you know, that I'm not coaching right now? So if American football is out. Weightlifting is out. Wrestling is out. Um, throwing is out. So four sports out. Okay. For me, I was thinking about it for a longer period. I would have, um, so take those other ones out, right? Fighting, like MMA, combat, I'm in. Um, distance running. So like. 800 meters 1500 meters you know, 5ks i'm all about it i am all in on that all in um the next sport after that i've, I've got a really good you know world-class lacrosse player one of the best lacrosse players in the world right now ryan tarafenko trains with us i think they're a great group of athletes to work with as well um swimmers is another one so i love working with swimmers they just crush it absolutely crush it and then finally sprint cyclists sprint cyclists are fantastic i've got a sprint cyclist right now but that's that's another group right there so until next time head over to peakstrength.app the google play store the apple ios store pick up that program train four days for four straight years peace